Now I'd like to introduce to you our presenter for today's webinar, Hussein Ryan Paul. Hussein is a senior electrical engineer of the HV testing group for Verico Asset Integrity Services, a member of the company of M Control. He has over 15 years of asset performance and condition assessment experience, specializing in HV asset testing, monitoring, and diagnostics. Hussein holds engineering qualifications, and throughout his career, he's been associated with the design and manufacture of transformers, site testing of transformers, bushings and cables, AIS and GIS switchgear, and rotating machines. His education includes an MPhil degree in condition monitoring of transformers using FRA from the University of Newcastle in Australia. He's a member of the SIGRE A1 AU panel and A2.53 working group in Transformers FRA. Please welcome Hussein. Thanks, Lee. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, Hossein Rahimpur is here. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. The webinar comes to you from AM Control Headquarters in Newcastle, New South Wales. Today's presentation is called Visibility and Understanding of the Condition of Critical Spares. Try to go to the next slide. Um, Uh, here is what we are going to cover today. A brief introduction to Verico HV testing group. Um, definition of critical spares, identifying and managing them, maintaining them, and condition assessment and common tests. Um, there are, uh, we have few case studies to review and we have time at the end for Q&A. Um, here is where our 40 years plus experience coming from. The business launched in 1960s as part of the Electricity Commission of New South Wales. You can see a picture of our old 720 kV test truck on the left side. Uh, later, with privatization, we became part of Pacific Power International. Uh, the business was acquired by Cornell Wagner in 2002. Then it was rebranded to Oricon following merging with two South African companies. Um, Mid-2017, the testing business of Oricon was acquired by M Control and uh, formed a new division uh, within AMP Control uh, called Verico. AMP Control has done a fantastic job in upgrading our major assets, including our 200 kV and 720 kV test trucks. You can see a picture of our two impressive mobile testing systems on the right hand side. Now, often after the lights have gone out, there's an urgent inquiry into where the spares are and what condition they are in. Whether the spare being stored in a transformer, bushing, motor, or cable, its condition at that time can either ever or lead to significant costs. It's not uncommon to find that temporary arrangements around the storage of spares have ended up as permanent. And uh, that the spares have been neglected since first being put into storage. Further, these assets can become invisible within the organization's asset management system which means that no scheduled maintenance or test regimes are in place to cater to these assets. This presentation will outline why having visibility and uh, an understanding of the condition of critical spares is an important element of good HV asset management practice. The presentation will also include examples of recent service experience.
while there is no common industry-wide accepted definition of critical spares exist, uh, here is one of the several listed ones in literatures to cover the basis. A critical spare is an item that is unique to the asset it supports, whose absence would cause a significant loss of asset service availability or a significant negative impact on safety, the environment, or meeting regulatory requirements. It is rarely used and has a long lead time for replenishment. Well, generally, they have the following characteristics. Uh, critical to the ongoing operation of the asset they support, and long lead times, and they are high dollar items. Have you experienced a failure without having a like for like replacement readily in hand? Um, this is a primary method for far too many companies for identifying the critical parts. Uh, the, the process can be tedious, time consuming, ties up labor management resources and requires information that may not be easily obtained as the system is characterized by a highly unpredictable and erratic demand and uh, by parts, costs of um, different magnitude. Uh, well, based on the surveys, 94% of companies recognize the concept, uh, but only 50% of them uh, have this included in their asset management plan. Well, here is the well-known desktop curve, which profiles the failure rate of an asset over its lifespan. You may use the principle to adjust your maintenance over the lifetime of the asset. Um, it begins at a relatively high rate due to defects or root problems in the design and manufacturing. Uh, or probably lack of quality control, installation issues, probably inadequate components or insufficient burn-in. This is the stage you need to ensure the acceptance test gets done, uh, including the ones subjecting the equipment to equal or even more demanding conditions than usual uh, to observe its behavior under stress. At this stage, you will need your commissioning spares. Uh, if you don't want major delays uh, in your commissioning, uh, then order the spares and make them available prior to the start of commissioning. Uh, later, I'll explain the importance of this with a case study. Warranty periods are typically one year. Uh, then you need to ensure the post-commissioning critical spares are purchased and available to you. As the asset uh, is aging, operating spares become vital. Uh, towards the end of the bus top curve function, uh, it has a positive slope and the failure rate increases as a result of wear and tear or poor maintenance. So it is very important to have these embedded to your asset management plan. Um, to avoid the sharp rise uh, and to extend the useful life of the asset, uh, establish preventive maintenance measures and critical spare reviews. Um, just a couple of strategies, probably uh, making a detailed uh, plan with periodic maintenance checks and activities, uh, considering uh, preventive replacement of key parts, using quality spare parts, get them inspected regularly and get them tested if unsure of their condition and prior to the replacement.
uh, keep the spares in most appropriate conditions with the recommended temperature and humidity level in the air. Uh, when it comes to spares, moisture ingress is one of the common issues. Now, the condition assessment of your spares. Um, here are the most common uh, tests, including the dielectric and uh, over voltage tests. Uh, each of these tests uh, giving you a specific information about your asset. The stringency and thoroughness of these tests are very important. Um, using the right measurement technique, accuracy of test results, interpretation of test results are of vital importance to understand if the asset is fit for service. To prove this, we determine how effective is the dielectric by IR, PI, and DDF measurements and um, the dielectric test across frequency range, uh, which give you an indication of moisture level in the medium. Applied voltage with sand test is another uh, effective check on the dielectric condition. Partial discharge measurement. Uh, this one aims to identify weakness or incipient breakdown, which might indicate that defects exist within the insulation structure that could result in unacceptable performance in service. Oil sampling for uh, DGA uh, dissolved gas analysis is a quite an important one, since it can also be done in service condition. From our spares testing, the highest failure rate belongs to the bushings that we have received over the last couple of years, mainly due to the poor storage. Uh, this is the reason for the, uh, the probably recommendations um, uh, we're giving to uh, so they, they, they shouldn't be left um, yeah, in a bad condition. And uh, it is very important to um, um, kept in a controlled environment. The, if you are reusing X service uh, spares, uh, an additional work may be required. The, a broken glass like the one in this picture uh, will increase the likelihood of moisture ingress and contamination. Moisture is one of the three main uh, kill killers of the insulation because of the effect of moisture on the resistivity of insulation material. It is necessary to obtain and maintain a high level of dryness in the insulation. Uh, the presence of moisture uh, due to housing seal failure means that even uh, higher internal pressure can be developed during the passage of system short circuit current. Um, this is of course due to the considerable expansion of water when changing to steam. Um, that's why probably poly polymeric material uh, gradually replacing the, the porcelain type ones. Um, at Verico, uh, upon receiving the bushings, we do the basic visual checks, inspections, or um, and visual examination uh, should show no abnormality, uh, such as low oil level, any cracks, slits, or damaged skirts. Steam clean the, we steam clean the bushings um, to remove the surface contamination as it adversely affects IR, DDF, and PD test results. And uh, then uh, we position the oil top bushings vertically on stand uh, and maintain them at ambient temperature for at least 12 
hours or usually 24 hours until a steady state condition has been reached before HP testing. Two important diagnostic tools are DDF and PD tests. Um, as you can see, uh, part of the standards uh, in the picture, uh, we, um, there are uh, strict criteria uh, around those. Uh, we have the capability to measure the dielectric dissipation factor at voltages up to the rated volt or, or even uh, higher to maximum system voltage uh, called UM. This is a requirement for bushings as well as rotating machines and there are, uh, as I said, there are strict criteria around this. Uh, obviously, it depends on the type of installation. For an oil impregnated paper bushing with the voltage increase from uh, approximately or just above the service voltage to UM, the increase in DDF values uh, is, is shouldn't be more than one milliwatt per bar. Uh, while for a resin, bound, resin bounded paper, this value is four milliwatt per bar. This is a requirement of the standard. The PD or the partial discharge acceptance criteria for OIP and RIP are 5 PC at lower voltages and 10 PC at uh, UM level. With, uh, now with our high end and uh, advanced partial discharge measurement and analysis system uh, we have, uh, we can do sensitive PD measurements on bushings, instrument transformers, and GIS system. The techniques we use differentiate the various PD sources and uh, PD interferences, and um, characterize the, the PD sources by their frequency signature. Um, here is uh, one of the few case studies I've got. Uh, the case study one is on bushing failure at commissioning stage. The original equipment manufacturer uh, performed um, the initial basic site testing uh, uh, on a 132 kV to a 33 kV transformer, uh, including the ratios, the resistances, IRs, and uh, CT testing and FRA. Um, however, uh, bushings or winding DDFs or even high voltage AC tests weren't on their initial scope. Um, no issues was identified from their testing. Um, but Verico was engaged uh, later to perform the remaining uh, site acceptance testing. And uh, again, no issue was identified from the low voltage tests, ratios, and uh, all the uh, basic tests, including the bushing uh, frequency domain spectroscopy tests. Uh, they all returned a good result. Um, until we performed an IR and DDFs on the bushings, LV A phase bushing returned um, abnormal results, um, which in next slides, uh, you will, I will be detailing them. The relatively lower IR, as you can see, uh, was measured on A phase bushing uh, when comparing to the other two phases. Very high uh, DDFs measured on A phase with rising trend, 11.9 uh, milliwatt per bar against um, a normal or healthy DDF of 5.7, or is actually, um, that's a nameplate value of the bushings. And uh, the, the values increased with voltage rise to 18.5 milliwatt per bar, which is quite high for a, an uh, OIP type bushing. 
in the next slide, uh, here I've got the, um, the, the interestingly enough, uh, no capacitance changes um, observed with the either voltage increase or across frequency range. Um, 240 volt FDS measurement uh, didn't show any signs of high DDF as it has uh, uh, this issue had uh, voltage dependent characteristics. Um, with the direction of client, we uh, the applied test was performed, uh, which is, um, I've got the results in the next uh, slide. Um, uh, as the test voltage on the low voltage winding was rising, audible audible discharges were here at 7 kV, which is far below the actual test level of uh, 56 kV, uh, which is a side test level. The test setup was checked, the voltage applied again, the discharging was repeatable. Um, the Testing was ceased to investigate. Further investigation found the LDA phase bushing was faulty. There was only one equivalent spare bushing available. Fortunately, uh, that single bushing passed tests and consequently um, the repair transformer passed all its HV tests. Having this spare, that single spare, um, they, which they actually, um, they, uh, at the time I think they told me they got it from another project, they didn't have one available. And I um, saved them a couple of months in possible delay. Uh, what would have happened if two bushing were needed? That's showing the, uh, how important it is we have the right number of spares, we have them available, and um, uh, and most important thing is to be stored in good condition. Well, this this was an example of a, an in commissioning stage, and I've got a couple of other uh, examples. Um, here is another spare bushing, 362 kV, failed high voltage DDF test. The test voltage raised to the first voltage step and uh, runway in DDF observed when retesting, uh, sorry, when, when testing uh, C1 capacitance. Um, uh, C2 capacitance also retained a high DDF value. The criteria around C2 capacitance is uh, loose uh, as it's very dependent on the construction of the bushing, but still it was high comparing to uh, those criteria. Uh, the next case study is on a 22 kV bushing. This one failed both DDF and PD test. Rising DDF characteristics and PD level of uh, one nanocolumn, 1000 PC at 22 kV. It's quite high for a um, type bushing. The IR was uh, 900 mega ohm, which is marginal for such a critical equipment. DDF of 40 mega watt per bar was also outside the normal limits. PD pattern indicated large voids between the insulation layers, possibly created with separation foils in bushing structure. Next case study is on a 132 kV transformer in uh, mining industry. Uh, sometimes the cause of high DDF is external. Uh, this is an example. The HV winding to earth DDF and capacitance values increase with uh, when rising volts. The interwinding DDF and capacitance values are were satisfactory and stable. Um, as the BGA didn't show a high moisture or other signs of degradation, uh, the, the most likely cause was deterioration of the paper lead cables. 
connected to the pushing and or, or the camp or the compound in the cable termination boxes associated with the uh, HV neutral and um, LB terminals. The next case study uh, is on a once half series KV generator transformer. The winding resistance result contains every element associated with the current flow between the terminals and includes all connections. Um, if this indication has deteriorated from the previous tests, it may be indicative, indicative of higher resistance joints. Um, if associated with the tapping winding, uh, the oxidized tap changer contacts may have developed a partially uh, insulating film on their contact surfaces. The, um, the arcing contacts uh, usually uh, manufactured from plain copper. Uh, the old types, the new ones probably um, silver. The, the operating mechanism for the selector switch contacts and the contact themselves suffer wear and require maintenance. Uh, uh, contact pressure also have to be periodically checked as the metallic particles are, can be produced and contaminate the oil. So with the, in regards to the, the tapping uh, issues, sometimes the results may be improved through exercising the contacts. In the context of HV testing, it's difficult to achieve a level equivalent to that during operating. If only, um, since only small currents are available. Um, next case study, uh, the last one, uh, is on a 11 kV uh, spare uh, condensate extraction pump motor. The dielectric uh, dissipation factor or DDF uh, uh, measured at 0.2 UR uh, up to the line voltage with the 20% increments. And as you can see, um, the capacitances are all most steady but the DDFs um, supposed to have um, the uh, with the, um, have the tip up and the difference in tan delta um, in standard limits. Uh, these exceeding those limits uh, stipulated in the standard, uh, the, the slope of the DDF characteristics. Um, over the entire voltage range is um, when you calculate it from the rated voltage to 0.2 times the rated voltage is 12.4, uh, which is uh, much higher than the standard limit. The, when measuring the partial discharge at face to ground voltage of 6.4 kV, the recorded results are around 30 nano, which is all above the recommended level of 10 nanocolom. The um, DDF and partial discharge results are poor, uh, with the PD showing voids in the insulation and V phase with a much lower PD. Uh, the, the outer phases uh, with uh, uh, high. PD. The DDF of around 30 nanocolom at 6.4 kV is also consistent with an aged winding. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, that uh, here is my details. Um, you can ask your question now, or um, uh, alternatively, you can send me an email to this email address.